Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to be doing a special best news in the film industry 2019. We're here at Camera Rescue with Yuho. And uh, yeah, we're going to be doing 12 uh, top news or important news of the year or past year. So first news, Yuho? Well, the first news, the biggest news of 2019 is that the demand on color film is bigger than the production capability. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's both on Kodak and Fuji's side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've seen uh, due to that uh, steady increase in price from pretty much everyone in the industry uh, from Kodak uh, starting in 2020, Fuji silently raising their prices. And uh, as they would resupply film, it would have a different price. And Lomography also increased their price, but Lomography mostly makes film uh, with Kodak as a partner yeah. and um, so yeah we've seen that problems of stocks and stuff like that so we've seen an increase in demand increase in price and back orders are in the double millions like uh, on for both companies which means like there's several tens of millions of orders back ordered uh, for film rolls which is a lot of demand yeah, it's huge for the community. It's the first time probably in history yeah. that we have a lack of film to provide to the film shooters out around the world. So hopefully they're, you know, upgrade their capacity and we'll see more film. Kodak is going to be doing that. Hopefully Fuji will too and, you know, the other players. Yeah. Uh, the second news uh, with Kodak is the Ektachrome. Uh, it's coming out in 120 and 4x5. Yeah, uh, Ektachrome released at the end of 2019 their 120 medium format version and 4x5. Also, I heard from a couple of sources that will be releasing 8x10, which yep. is huge news because 8x10 is hard to shoot and usually very expensive. And Fuji people have been having to source it from Japan, so a Kodak being in the market for that is huge. Um, and they finished the lineup, so they have 35, medium format, large format, which is huge. Uh, Ilford has done also a change of lineup for um, a film, and it's the Ortho 80. Yeah, news number three would be Ilford releasing Ortho 80 in roll film format. It was available in sheet film as a special order once a year with their other rare sizes and ultra large format. Now we have Ortho ISO 80 black and white in 35 and 120 which is good. They, you know, ran it up the whole production uh, to having almost every film in every format. And I mean, it's also, uh, you can process it in red light, which yeah. might turn into nice YouTube videos. Yeah, maybe. you can do, yeah, you can probably, yeah, you can develop with red light and see, uh, develop by inspection, which is what they say. And also Ilford has released uh, their re lineup of their multigrade five paper, which was lit last released I think like 25 years ago. So that's pretty big news for the darkroom users that they're investing in, in new paper, new technology to make you know paper available to everyone in 2019 and 2020. Yeah, the fourth news uh, for, it's also involves darkroom and involves chemistry is tetanol. Yeah, last year we finished the news. Well, we did the same thing for the 2018, which I'll link below, uh, saying that Tetanol had uh, basically announced insolvency after Photokina. Yeah. And uh, thankfully, a new Tetanol has taken over and they are currently producing a huge amount of orders with a little bit less people because they had to, you know, restructure. But that's good news that they're running, that we're going to have C41, RA4 and, you know, all the chemistry that we love from Tetanol. News number five goes out of the chemical world and into the mechanical world of cameras. Uh, there's currently only three production lines left uh, that are manufacturing new cameras that are not uh, toy cameras. Uh, there's the Nikon F6 manufacturing line in China, uh, in, well, well, in Japan. Japan. I guess, I hope. I hope. And, then, uh, and then there's a Leica MP slash MA lineup somewhere in Germany. And then there's a Lomograph LCA done in Eastern Europe somewhere. Yeah, so we have basically no medium format uh, cameras being made. Uh, yeah. As you know, you have your legacy Mamiya, Hasselblad, and Yashica and all these cameras. But in 35, we do have an SLR with the F6. Canon 1V got discontinued a couple of years ago. Uh, the F6 supposedly is still made. 
Then you have your rangefinder, high class Leica MPMA, which is nice. And then the point and shoot world has the LCA, which is nice. Yeah. And the point of shoot world has changed during 2019 a lot. Uh, the, the, the price increase in cameras like Olympus Mu2 and uh, the Contax T2 and uh, the hyped up uh, like premium compacts mm -hmm. uh, has increased even more during this year and uh like it's it's all also i think this is the reason that color film is back ordered yeah because you know you have one of these you use a lot of basic color film and uh, it's a very easy way to come into film photography and you use a lot of film yeah yeah basically point and shoots in color plus or c200 is an easy way to shoot and have fun and uh, medium format, I guess, is the next step for a lot of people. And then we have in news number six, another film coming from an unexpected player, big player in the game that had been discontinuing. And it's Fujifilm re-releasing Acros in their Acros 2 version. Uh, we didn't expect Fuji to have a change of heart in their film line. And um, the biggest news is that it's not only come, but it's been made in the UK. Yeah, that's very big news because everyone ex was expecting a made in Japan uh, sticker sticker or whatever on, on the, the film. Uh, but it was made in the UK. But uh, Fuji and Ilford have a very good uh, relationship, yeah. a long standing relationship. So it's, uh, it's going to be a big interesting question. Will it be made in the UK in the long run or is it made it's in maybe Japan? a batch run or a test run made in a smaller capacity by Ilford which is more flexible than maybe a big player like Fuji and then we have in news number seven Lomography released a Kickstarter campaign with a Metropolis film which is a, a strange color film a different look color film but the biggest news comes with Yuho told me that it's made in Germany it has a made in Germany you know uh, name on the box and then we we were wondering how is that possible because there, there shouldn't be a color film uh, facility. Fa facility in germany or there hasn't been one for a long long time so mm, it's uh, that's we're pretty surprised to see that and maybe that explains also that it's not so much like a normal color film like the lomography 100 400 and 800 but yeah. a more specialized niche uh, color film yeah and but it's good that someone's trying out to do yeah color film again because that's eventually gonna happen that there has to be new color film yeah, manufactured hopefully. and the quality won't be as good as we've gotten used to in the last decade or so probably not then we have news from another uh facility coming out with a new film uh which yeah news number eight would be cat labs 80 made in china and uh, everyone is expecting it to be Shanghai, but it's not really Shanghai. No, it's in the same factory and it uses the same backing paper and it uses the same stickers. But there's a reason for that, because you want your own backing paper. You have to do 100,000 rolls or 200,000 rolls mm -hmm. for them to you know, put the logos and everything. Yeah. So basically, CAD Labs had to do a smaller order, which is nice that you can... Uh, manufacture your own film in smaller quantities, but the backing paper and the stickers have to be exactly the same unless he's ordering bigger. Hopefully throughout the year, if they sell more, they can do bigger orders and will have their own branding on that. But it's supposedly not the same film as Shanghai. And in news number nine, uh, there is also a niche uh, film called Santa Ray 1000. Mm -hmm. That's a black and white film released by Camera Store Rescue. Or... Yeah, well, it's the, a the elves ground. gave it to us. You yeah, know. and it's a 1000 speed film, black and white, that will be hopefully coming a new line or a new batch in 2020. Yep. And uh, it's not made in the normal facilities that you guys know. Uh, it's Santa Elves little secret yeah so that's good news too and you know more film the better yeah it's hand manufactured so it's small batches but it's the first time this emulsion is available worldwide in the consumer market which is yeah. good and then we have news from italy uh finally ferrania has announced their p30 it's available in the u.s and it's it's good to see ferrania doing film and coming out with new well their production 
continuously. Yeah, I mean, they have to get revenue to go where they want to go. So like now they have the black and white, hopefully getting them revenue. And uh, the P30 is a very loved film, even mm -hmm. the first batch that came out like three years ago or two years two ago. Two years ago, approximately. Yeah, Ferrania has been, you know, going through a lot of problems. There's actually updates in their website and their Kickstarter explaining all these issues. And uh, hopefully they'll be coming out with some other black and white films from what I've heard uh, in other speeds that maybe people miss. So hopefully we'll see more things coming through Ferrania in 2020. The news number 11, I've run out of fingers. Uh, it's essentially <laughs> uh, the it never was a news during the year because it's quietly come into the realization of people mm -hmm. who shoot medium format yeah we've been seeing uh i think the end of 2018 we saw a lot of issues with uh, backing paper with kodak and they would see through to your pictures which was not good news and this year we've noticed the backing paper in a couple films that we love has changed to a more plasticky feel and a lot of other factories have been having issues finding uh, backing paper, for example. Adox hasn't been able to do 120 film, even though they have the ability of doing 120 film and cutting 120 film, but there's no backing paper. So backing paper is being sort of sold by people like Kodak, but still other players are having hard times finding the source of a reliable backing paper yeah so there's only two places that have the same old backing paper we know and they're ilford and fuji and the rest are trying to figure it out figure it out and then that's maybe one reason for the price hikes too yeah and uh last uh we have news number 12 you hold your 10 fingers yeah and that would be the community and the labs yeah um the community has grown a lot but uh, I'm, I feel very strongly that it's uh, there is a new like everyone knows there's a new generation coming to film. Mm -hmm. But the reason is that uh, like film is getting more digital. Like there's there's labs that are servicing in a hybrid way. Yeah, we're they, we're adapting to the new technology, the new use of a film because most people were shooting film, developing yeah. and getting small prints. Yeah. And nowadays it's you drop it off at your lab or you ship it to your lab, which is a very new thing yeah. in this world. And they send you your we transfer or digital downloads. And in high resolution, not yeah. the 1,500 times 1,000 that your... The JPEG. <laughs> the JPEG that your local jet lab might have given you on a CD. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this has completely transformed uh, the, the use of film in, mm -hmm. in a way. Like yeah. it's now very nice for social media yeah most labs used to run through mini labs that were connected to paper mini labs and nowadays it's all standalone scanners throughout the world that are yeah. just scanning and sending film to people through you know the internet and we've seen labs getting more involved with the community uh throughout the world becoming hubs for film loves from film lovers and newbies to understanding how to shoot film because you know getting new to film there was not a place to talk about it except for the internet now we have labs sharing a lot yeah and like the darkroom lab for example went through a uh, hundred thousand instagram followers this year uh, they do an amazing job providing information on uh for the users on pushing pulling cross processing mm -hmm. um everything you yeah. can yeah any new film that comes out the darkroom is basically has you covered with their blog uh posts about what it looks like the differences with current films yeah. and stuff like that so yeah we've seen a very steady increase in labs and community and you know it's very good to hear that coming because we need a Close yeah. community. And I mean, the, there's new labs popping up in uh, almost every major hipster like location mm -hmm. in in the world. Uh, they're either hand developing Yobo uh, labs or then there's something a bit more industrial. And you can see it even in the scanners, the most popular Nori 2HS 1800 has pop, uh, popped from five thousand dollars to ten thousand or fifteen thousand mm -hmm. in a year. So labs are coming up, and it's a very good news. Yeah, hopefully we'll see manufacturers of lab equipment maybe come into play once again in a close future. Yeah, analog uh, news you've been doing for several years, mm -hmm. uh, and that this is the 
best year yet? Yeah, this this is by far the best year in film news. Uh, Photokina 2016, where you and me met, it was very sad. And most of the community and people were, you know, not looking happy. 2018, it was huge. 2019 is even bigger. Hopefully, 2020 will be even better. Yeah. So, like, looking to the new year, I'm, I'm feeling positive. I think everyone's feeling positive, And uh, hopefully, a lot of people will get, get into film and stay in film. Um, anything else you think was important in 2019? Well, you reached 200 new shows. No, a hundred. No oh, one hundred. <laughs> we'll get there yeah. slowly but surely. But yeah, it's been a steady increase in everything. Oh, you filmed. reached ten thousand subscribers. I did re uh, reach ten thousand subscribers. Hopefully, I'll be do a live stream maybe at the show center, um, and we can ask and have questions with you all involved. So yeah, thanks to everyone to watching and supporting the channel, supporting Camera Rescue's mission. Thanks for having me, Camera mm -hmm. Rescue. And uh, hopefully we have a good news for 2020. Yeah. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. See ya.